Today was one of those days where I just had a genius thought that popped in my head. Not really, I'm joking, it's kind of stupid. But I was thinking, can you solder a threaded pipe fitting? I don't have any need for doing this. I will explain this in one second, but I'm not actually using this. This is just, what you're seeing here, this is just a mangled mess of a test piece. This is when I was very first learning to uh, solder a while ago. And actually, as funny as this is, this is a fitting for a garden hose and I have a ball valve here. And on the end, I literally drilled holes in the end of a cap here. This is literally just a homemade garden hose nozzle. Again, it's, it's, it's ugly. This was like a test piece and I did this kind of screwing around just seeing if I could to make my own custom hose nozzle that would never break and had a full uh, ball valve on it that I could actually shut the hose off and not have it sit there and drip. So disregard the joints. As ugly as these joints are, they never leak. This thing worked perfectly. I, I actually used this for an entire summer. Never had a single drip leak out of any of this. But that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is I was just curious if you can solder a threaded fitting. And these fittings here, they're dirty. So I just spent several minutes with a pick, a pick and a uh, bristle, wire bristle brush cleaning up these fittings. And actually, if you look at this copper fitting here, I mean, this thing's all chewed up and there's some stains in here from where I had uh, pipe dope in there that I can't get that residue out. I picked out as much of the Teflon tape as I could. And doing that, you'll understand why Teflon tape and pipe dope works because it clogs the heck out of these threads. And if you can see, there's still pipe dope residue in here. There's some Teflon tape residue in there. So I'm gonna leave most of that there because I want this to be a realistic test. I'm just curious if for whatever reason you had to solder a threaded fitting, it would probably be one that was already used. It wouldn't be a brand new one. So it's gonna be some imperfect. There's gonna be some leftover Teflon. I wanna make this kind of a worst case scenario. I'm just curious if it'll work. So let's learn together. As far as the flux goes, the two flux that I have on hand right now currently is I have this OD H2O, this water soluble paste flux that kind of looks like caramel. I could use that, but I'm gonna be using this, the OD number 95. This is the lead free tinning flux. It's more like a wax, but it's a tinning flux. I've had better luck with this. So for this video, I'm gonna elect to use the lead free tinning flux. Again, I'm kind of making it worst case scenario, but also I think if I was gonna to have to solder something, I would probably rather use the tending flux. So I will use that. And then the uh, solder that I'm gonna use is I have two solders here. I have Sterling, which is, it's a lead free, but it's a low melt temperature solder. I could use that, but what I'm gonna use instead is this is, it's also by Harris Industries, as is the Sterling, it's by Harris, but this is the lead free, Bridget nickel bearing solder. I have a small roll of this, the Bridget. And the reason why I'm using this specifically is their marketing claims that it joins large or loose brass and copper fittings. And for my research, people said that if you have like poorly fitting connections that have some gap and slop in them, that the Bridget solder works good for that. So what I will be using is the Bridget and the tinning flux. So let's clean this up a tiny bit and let's find out if this actually works or not. I'm not going to make these super clean, but I do want to give it somewhat of a chance. So I'm just going to just try a little bit here. You can see some residue. That's Teflon tape and pipe dough crumbs and particles that are coming out. Again, I'm not going to make it perfect, but I just kind of want to give it somewhat of a chance here. It's not that bad inside, but we're gonna leave it be. Like I said, you would never actually do this. I'm just curious if it works. So, again, not perfect. There's a lot of gunk in there. Just wanna see what we can do with this. So I'm gonna do this nice and dirty. Get some flux on there. Like I said, I'm gonna do this nice and dirty. Cause I wanna like I said, in my mind, I just want to see if this would work. If this was like a worst case scenario, you had to whatever, do this for some reason. So I'm going to flux the heck out of this fitting. And why not? Let's, uh, let's just put a little bit inside here for fun. Kind of get that swirled around a little bit. I have no expectations or hope for this. 
I just want to know. Let's put a little bit around this uh, rim here. So what do you think? Is that too much flux? That's a lot of flux. So let's screw it in together. But I'm not going to tighten this with a wrench. I'm only going to tighten this hand tight because it is a threaded fitting. And if I cranked on this with a pipe wrench, we may actually be able to tighten it just enough that it may actually seal on its own. So I'm going to wipe some of this flux away and we're going to hit the torch. Let's see. Okay, so there is our joint. It took some solder. I have no idea how much actually flowed in there. I intentionally made it nice and uh, goopy and an excess there. Obviously, I'm not going for looks on this one. But right there is where we're talking about. I mean, it looks mostly sealed out here. We have some porosity here. You know, it is not the cleanest job. Let me zoom back out here. Focus the camera. Come on. Yeah. So, let's see. Let's hook it up to the hose and see what happens. Let's see if it worked. We have some leaking from here, but that's just where the uh, the hose fitting is because this hose is a little bit imperfect. But let's open this up, see what happens. We got no leaks there. We do have a, like I said, we have a leak here. You can see it trickling out right here, but this is just a damaged hose. And I have good water pressure here. Nothing there. This is full pressure on the hose. That fitting is, there's nothing. I mean, we got nothing coming out of there. It worked. The only dripping, see, we got some dripping on the end here, which is from the uh, the holes in the hose. But look, the only drip that we have is from the hose connection there. The actual soldered connection, it's holding up. It ain't leaking.
look at that it actually worked can't believe it that actually worked wow okay let's see if we can break this now i promise you i'm not that weak oh well we slipped tore tore the copper up real good Okay, let's try that again. Okay. It's really hard to do. I'm leaning over a tripod. But let's see. Oh, it ain't moving. I, I'm, I'm pushing with, I'm like, I'm, I'm really pushing here. It ain't moving. It is not moving. I mean, we're getting shavings here, and I am just chewing this copper up. Look at that. I mean, we are just chewing into the copper. It ain't moving. It ain't budging. Obviously, this video is not a should you. It's a could you. I'm not recommending this at all. I was just curious. I was driving home from work, and I thought, hey, can you solder threaded fittings if you have to? Apparently, yes.